Well, hello, beautiful people. Today, I've got a tech demo to show you of On One Photo Raw 2023. And I'll tell you, I'm pretty impressed. One of the reasons why I'm really impressed is because they really put some thought into the workflow of an editor. For example, I have this photo of a lemur that we took at the zoo. Again, this was taken by my son. If we zoom in here, we see the eyes. They're not as sharp as they could be. So other than the exposure changes that I've made here, I've added some contrast, reduced the highlights, things like that. Typically what I would do is some sharpening at this point. So I'm going to head over to noise and sharpening, and this is where we will find tack sharp AI. As soon as we click it, it's going to apply some sharpening to the image. So we're at a hundred percent here and let's do a before and after. So here we have the before and the after. Now let's look at it at a 50% zoom. And we see that uh, there is some sharpening happening there but it's quite noisy. So what I like about what they've done here is that there is this option to apply both no noise AI, tack sharp AI at the same time. I'm simply gonna click on both and it's gonna apply the noise reduction. So we see here the before and the after. Now the eyes aren't as sharp because the focus point was probably on the body. But as you see with tack sharp AI, it's made the eyes more sharper. I'm gonna click apply so that the sharpening and the noise adjustment stays. But now I wanna do a little bit more to the photo. So I'm gonna open up the presets tab here and we're gonna find the wildlife venture preset. Now, as I hover over these, you're gonna see we now have full screen previews. Now I quite like the look of this and I can apply it, but I only want to apply it in the background. And this is where super select comes in clutch. On the left, you're going to see super select here. I'm simply going to click on that hover over and you see right away it recognizes the background and the animal. This makes me so happy. <laughs> Luminar Neo users, you know what I'm talking about. So what I want to do here is apply the preset only to the background. So I'm going to select the back and you'll notice that it's blue. There's a little bit here that it's missed. I simply click it and it's added it to the mask. Now full transparency again, because it's a beta version, the mask selection is still to be worked on so that it's a bit more accurate. As you can see here, it's missing a little bit. And if I click it, it's gonna select the animal too. But obviously we don't want that to happen. I'm gonna click the lemur again, and now we just have the background. So I can come over here to the preset, click on the preset, and it only applies it to the background. Now, as always, I can take the slider and bring the adjustment up or down if I want it less intense. So I'm gonna bring it down to about, let's say three quarters of the way. And then if I wanted to apply something else to the lemur itself, I'm gonna click on the lemur and I have a couple options here. I can either right click and pick my adjustments here or at the top, it's basically the same thing. Let's say I wanted to add texture enhancer just to bring out more of those details. If we do a simple before and after, there's a before, there's the after. Let's zoom in to 50%. We do a before and an after. I could even go back in here and choose the background. Right click and we're going to choose lens blur and we're going to pick bokeh small and we can make adjustments to the background. We can make it more blurry if we wanted to. We can even adjust the blooming so it's not too much. But as you see, we have just a bit more background blur. Let me toggle this on and off which is something I previously couldn't do in Luminar Neo because it was specific to portraits. And there's no blur function currently in Luminar Neo. This is a photo I took a couple weeks ago at a recent shoot. And I like the photo, but unfortunately, because I was using an old vintage lens, the eyes are a little bit soft because I missed focus just by a few millimeters. It's not bad from regular viewing distance. You wouldn't be able to notice, but being a stickler as I am, I want those eyes in focus. So I've gone ahead and edited how I normally do. I'm going to go ahead head here and just click on both to trigger tack sharp AI and no noise AI. 
So as we see here, the results, the eyes are nice and sharp, nice and bright, and I really like the results I'm getting here. I'm going to turn this off, and if we look at the before and after, this is the raw, unedited version. And then this is the edited version. Let's go to 100% and look at those eyes. We'll do a before, and we'll do an after, before, and after. Now going back to Super Select AI, one of the reasons why I think this is super impressive is that you're really just hovering over an object or an element and it recognizes it. So we see here it's picked up the streetcar. We go to the bus, it's going to highlight the bus. Let's turn these off and click on the road and you see whatever it is we want, we can select it. One of the other things you can try is mask AI and it works the same way, except that you can do it on a layers level. So if we go to effects, add filter, you're going to see on the left here, apply with mask. So we can go ahead and pick the buildings here, or we could do the man-made ground. We could do a combination and then we can apply any of these filters on the right. So if I click on man-made ground and let's say I want something grungy looking. You'll see now I have my options here and I can make the adjustments as much as I want. Let's really bring out the details there. Could bring the saturation down, bring the brightness down and there you go. And then we can again do the same thing with any of the other objects on the scene. I know this was a quick demo, not very in-depth. I've really just spent a couple days learning about the new features and I will release more videos in the coming days. So if there's anything specific you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But I'll be honest, I'm super impressed so far. I can't really judge the performance at this time because it is a beta version. So until I get the official release, I'm going to hold off on judging performance. But in terms of feature set, I could see myself switching to On One Photo Raw permanently based on my current workflow. But alas, only time will tell. Now, if you're into portrait editing, be sure to check out this video on On One Photo Raw's Portrait AI. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.